Ever since I was a child, I've always loved the great outdoors. Just being surrounded by nature gave me a feeling of happiness. I'm not sure what exactly I enjoyed so much about it. Whether it was the animals, the plants, or just the tranquility, but one thing was for certain. I was at home in the woods. My love for the outdoors is probably best attributed to my father. Every summer, him and I would load up the truck and drive two hours north to a cabin he'd rent for a week. We'd spend the entire week fishing, cooking s'mores by a bonfire, hiking, and generally spending time with each other. It may sound cliche, but those are some of my fondest memories of my childhood. Suffice to say, that tradition my father and I had stuck with me even after I had graduated high school and got a full-time job. Once a year, I'd save up my vacation days, load up my truck, and make my way to a local campsite. I'd usually bring some friends along, co-workers, or some girls I'd be dating. Most of them weren't too thrilled to be alone in the woods with a guy they had only known for a couple of months, which is understandable. But the few who did go with me over the years said they had a blast. Although I had many people go camping with me in the woods, most of the time it was just me and my best friend Jimmy. We had grown up together and a couple of times my father brought him along with us on our excursions. Jimmy didn't care too much for the outdoors. But he was a... How did he put it? A firearm enthusiast. He also liked to drink and enjoyed bonfires as much as the next guy. So whenever that time of year rolled around and I had no one else to go with... He was always my last resort. Last year, he brought enough alcohol to subdue three fraternities and ended up drinking most of it by himself. He called me a few days after we had gotten home and he told me he had the best time ever. Though I highly doubt he even remembers the trip. He spent half the time passed out in a drunken coma in the tent. And the other half he spent shooting beer cans until they were metallic dust. Aside from my inebriated companion, I had a relatively good time. While he was unconscious, I took a stroll through the woods, admiring the scenery. Even though I would go camping year after year, I always found myself amazed at the world around me. The trees swaying in the breeze. The animals scampering away from my noisy footsteps. The fresh air cleansing my lungs. I was having a great time. Not long after, we packed up, and by we, I mean I packed up, and we made our way home. That was the last time I truly enjoyed camping. A few weeks ago, I was preparing for my yearly trip into the woods. I attempted to talk some friends into joining me, however, all of them seemed to have plans and couldn't make it. So I asked Jimmy if he would join me once again, though this time he had to decline. He told me that his work was riding him, and if he took any more time off, it would result in termination. Upon hearing this, I was put in a strange position I had never found myself in. I know it may sound strange, but I always had someone who wanted to go with me every year. I called around frantically, hitting up old contacts whom I hadn't spoken to in months. All of my attempts, however, had proved fruitless. As the week was fast approaching, I resigned myself to going alone. I convinced myself that having some one-on-one -on -one time with nature would be spiritually beneficial. I'm not spiritual, but it made me feel better to believe that. The day had arrived, and I gathered up everything I would need for a week of tranquility. I packed it all into the back of my pickup and hit the road. This year, I had chosen a new location to camp at. I had gone to the same old spot for many years and I wanted to have a change of scenery. This site had great reviews online and was only an extra hour drive away so I took it. When I arrived, the turn off into the woods gave me a strange feeling. The trees on either side of the road seemed to grow and fuse together at the branches, almost creating a natural arch over the road. It was as if I were driving into an endless tunnel. The further I drove, the more dense the foliage became. The thought to turn back and go home briefly crossed my mind when I saw a worn down sign that read, Campsite Ahead. I sighed as I pulled up to another turnoff that led to a small clearing. 
The first thing I noticed when I parked was that I was the only vehicle here. The reviews had led me to believe this place was a popular locale for families to enjoy nature. I must have just chosen a slow month to visit, I thought to myself. I grabbed my pack from my truck and made my way into the woods. As I was walking, that strange feeling I felt earlier had come back. I couldn't hear the animals scampering away from me. The trees seemed static above me, almost frozen in time. The air all around me felt dense, and that only seemed to add to my nervousness. I finally arrived at another small clearing. The trees overhead seemed to part just enough to let sunlight shine down on this area. It probably looked like aliens were trying to beam me up. I quickly got busy setting up the tent and gathering nearby materials for a small campfire. I found a log at the edge of the clearing and dragged it over so I could have a place to sit. The day slowly transitioned to dusk, and with it came a new feeling, one which made me check over my shoulder at the quickly darkening woods around me again and again. I'm not sure why I felt the need to check behind me so much, as there was no sounds to be heard throughout the woods, save for the crackling of the small fire in front of me. The night quickly fell upon me. I decided to head to bed in hopes of a better tomorrow. I crawled into my flimsy tent, zipping it up behind me. I quietly slid into my sleeping bag and laid there, listening. The crackling of the fire had died down. I was left with an utter silence. A silence that shouldn't be in the middle of the woods. I laid there for 20 minutes trying to take my mind off my surroundings. My fatigue slowly started to grow and just as I was about to drift off to blissful sleep, I heard something. It was the snapping of a stick right next to my tent. Hearing this amidst the silence forced my eyes wide open. Sticks don't just snap on their own. But what was truly bothering me was how something had gotten so close to my tent without me hearing them. I laid there waiting, my breath caught in my chest wondering if something was about to tear through my tent at any moment. The slowest minute I had ever experienced ticked by. Then two. After what felt like an hour of laying there, I decided to shut my eyes and go to sleep. As soon as my eyelids shut, I heard something that nearly gave me a heart attack. It was a voice, just on the other side of the tent. The voice said my name. David. Upon hearing this, my flight response kicked in and I tore out of my tent into the dead of night. I quickly glanced around and saw that I was the only one in the entire area. My anxious mind combined with my imagination must have just made the whole thing up. Still, I didn't want to remain in the woods any longer so I gathered up my tent and my supplies and began my trek back to my truck. Just as I was about to reach my vehicle, a twig snapped right next to me. Instinctively, I turned, and what I saw froze me in my tracks. It's hard to describe, but I'll try my best. The creature was about the same size as me, but its arms seemed too long for its body. Its knuckles seemed to just barely hang above the ground. Its skin was incredibly pale, a stark contrast against the black woods behind it. Its face was unsettling, completely bald. It had no eyes, but it had a large mouth filled with razor-sharp teeth. As horrifying as that was, what really freaked me out was how it was moving. It somehow wasn't making a single sound. I was watching it take lumbering steps towards me, but with each step it took, I didn't hear anything. It was getting closer to me. It stopped only a few feet away from me and called out my name again, almost as if it were looking for me. David. 
I ran. I made it to my truck and tossed my bags in the back. I never drove faster in my entire life. I didn't stop speeding until I was safely back home. I used to love the outdoors. But now, I'm too terrified to even leave my house. I haven't been sleeping well and I've been having some really horrible dreams lately. And I swear on quiet nights, I can hear twigs snapping just outside my window. So if any of you plan on going camping soon, please, take someone with you. If you don't, you might not hear the creature coming for you, and it'll be too late to get away.